Contestant number nine, Garrett Hamlin. I've been dying to give this speech. I've been dying to give this speech. Garrett Hamlin. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know that Arizona has literally thousands and thousands of miles of stunning hiking trails. If you can make time on your calendar, you won't regret it. If you can't make time, well now, what's stopping you? Mr. Contest Chair, thank you. Friends, Toastmasters, one day last May, I went out for a run on one of my favorite hiking trails. This run started out great, but then I felt something change in my body. When I got home, my muscles were twitching all over from my nose to my toes, and it hasn't stopped to this day. It feels like an electrical storm continually running through my body. I went over to the VA hospital to get this taken care of. They ran a smorgasbord of tests. They did a brain MRI. There was nothing there. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is they were totally bamboozled. Fortunately, about five months ago, I saw a civilian neurologist. This highly qualified doctor methodically asked questions tested my feet and my hands, and he boink, checked my reflexes. But then suddenly, he got very serious, quiet, as he carefully double-checked all his work. Finally, he sat down, looked me right in the eyes, and said, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. You have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Doc, I asked, what does that mean? ALS is a progressive terminal disease. It's killing the nerves that control your muscles, and soon you will be unable to walk. Then you'll be unable to speak, until finally, you will be unable to breathe. He continued, you only have about three years to live. There is no cure, I'm sorry. I drove home in shock. I desperately Googled everything about ALS. I was searching for the cause, I was searching for a cure. I was searching for any hope at all. But what I learned is that by the time these twitchy symptoms first appear, the disease is already deep in the motor neurons, and there's simply no stopping its progress. According to the ALS Association website, this mysterious disease strikes us military veterans at twice the rate of civilians. In fact, since 2001, ALS has taken the lives of more veterans than the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. Now, I've come to grips with reality. I've adjusted my mindset accordingly. And I've set my mind on three priorities. Faith, family, and friends. Faith. Let me tell you, knowing that you're dying is a great way to grow your faith. I've been praying more frequently and fervently than ever. Plus, I have an entire team of people praying persistently for me because only a miracle from God can save me. Family. I had to tell my precious girlfriend Susan the bad news. You know what she did? She promised to stand by me to the end. She is one courageous woman. Oh, and I'm no fool. I put a ring on it. We're getting married <laughs> next Saturday. Thank you. We're excited.
friends. <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, really, I'm a bit of an introvert, so I love Toastmasters. That's why I just came back and rejoined my old club. And it is so good to be back, even if it can only be for a short time. Faith, family, and friends. Now, that's what matters most to me. Oh, and as for my old to-do list and the burden of these tasks I never got around to, there's not room in my short life for these burdens anymore. I was tasked out to finish my master's degree, to remodel the bathroom, to empty my email inbox. <laughs> No! Here's my new mindset. Instead of hoping to get around to it someday, if a task is truly worthwhile, then I put it on the calendar. And if it isn't, I simply throw it away without feeling guilty. You see, I have the ultimate short timer's attitude because life is short. Hey. Can we talk about your mindset for a moment? Is your to-do list making you feel burdened and guilty? Are you missing out on what matters most? Well, what if the doctor looked you in the eyes and said, your days are numbered? If that happened, what would you suddenly make room for on your calendar? What burdens would you finally feel free to just throw away? What new choices would you make in your life? Let's face it, people. We are all dying, whether we know our expiration date yet or not. But come on. Are you truly living like you're dying? Friends, my prayer for you is that you will choose to live like you're dying before the doctor looks you in the eyes. We know that dying is inevitable. And we know that living, truly living, is just a mindset. Well now, what's stopping you? Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you. Thank you.